Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are on tour. We are in Dusseldorf in Germany at the SDN and Open Flow World Congress. And uh, I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Sue Rudd from Strategy Analytics. She is the Director of Service Provider Analysis. Sue, good to see you again. Nice to meet you. We have met before. We if have indeed. Having... Nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> and the last time we were talking, because we have, we have a, 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 a locale in London in common, because we both, even though you live in the States, we, we're both in the same area. Absolutely. So, which is one good thing. But let's talk about other than that. I'd like to be, begin by talking about the show that we're at. Yes. A couple of years ago in Darmstadt, there were 300 delegates. Last year at Bad Homburg, there were, I don't know, whatever it was, 900 and something. This time the 1300 they're turning them away at the doors. They actually over, they were oversubscribed, which is a great place to be in. Yep. But there's a discussion around here and in the industry about whether or not it remains this sort of size where everybody knows everybody else and real networking takes place or it does, goes the usual route of getting very, very big very quickly and then imploding. What do you reckon? Well, this reminds me of cellular in the, in the 1980s when the early people into mobile networking all got together and, and everybody was trying to solve the same problems. And that was before everybody got competitive and didn't talk to each other anymore. <laughs> so I think the problem sort of solves itself. You actually have a great networking opportunity when a lot of new ideas and new approaches. It's, I think it's the most exciting I've seen people be about telecoms in the last 15 years. So I think the excitement is getting the people here. Layer 123 deserves a lot of credit for really becoming the forum where the network operators come. And as you know, that's a hard one to achieve. It certainly is, and they've done very well at it. And there are a lot of rival conferences, and I've been recommending everyone to come to this one if they wanted to talk with both operators and the developers. Well, that's high praise coming and, from you. Uh, I even got one of the major infrastructure providers who wasn't planning to come. The minute they heard that they ought to be coming, they said, uh, we'll come especially since part of their company is in Germany. Well, that helps. <laughs> Let's get down to the sort of, sort of nitty-gritty for, for a bit, Sue. Um, look, SDN these days, given that the technologies are not set in stone, but they're real. Mm -hmm. We know how to do them. They know how they're going to be applied in most cases. It's as much about business transformation as technology or technological transformation. Uh, what do you think, if you were... Um, looking at this, what do you think service providers and, and operators need to do from a business transformation perspective to ensure they take full advantage of NFE and SDN? Well, there are two parts to this, but I think you're absolutely right. This is the operators that took the early lead, like AT&T and Deutsche Telekom and now even Telefonica, but particularly the first two, they actually decided to adopt SDN and the whole NFE architecture not based on a business plan, which is very rare for an operator. They adopted it because they wanted to look at a whole new way of doing business. And in economic terms, this means shifting to a new supply curve. And if you remember from your microeconomics 101, you learned lots about shifting along supply curves to reduce costs and get more volume. You learned very little about shifting to a new supply curve, which is inherently a risky thing to do. And it means massive structural change. So I don't think anyone can totally predict uh, what is clear here that the benefits and savings come, originally they were supposed to come from CapEx and I think now the operators are talking less about that than about service agility and new ways to generate revenues. But even more important, the ability to deal with an order of magnitude more traffic for the same OPEX. So rather than talking about lowering OPEX, we're actually seeing the ability to be able to scale massively without incurring incremental expense, uh, or at least not proportionally incremental expense. And this really is a supply curve change. And so we will actually see a lot of changes in how they operate, how they scale, and then more importantly, how they actually deal with customers because they're just beginning to think through what are the processes for offering new services and what does that mean about customer involvement and you may have heard AT&T talk about user-defined networking the the ultimate fantasy is to let the user define the services they want well I think we're a ways away from that but I think the real business process change is going to ultimately be that a, a customer can spin up an instance of a service that's been agreed with the operator and spin it up under their own control and enterprises will love that they can add a VPN at their own initiative and it'll actually save both the operator and the customer money 
So it is truly a different business on a structural and transition basis. So, but we're in for a 10 to 15 year transition process here. And some of the process change is going to require organizational change that's going to be painful. Well, exactly. We can, we can talk a lot about that. But if we look at the tier, briefly, if we look at the tier one players around the world, they're big. They still tend to be pretty monolithic. They're, very sl they're still slow to react, despite all the protestations to the, 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 to the other side. It, you know, the fact of the matter is, is the bureaucracy is top-heavy and yes. very often slows things down to a, to a crawl. Now, that's one thing, and so the technologies, NFE and SDN, are fine, but you need to be able to quickly change process and organizational psychology to be able to help that along, and that seems to me to be a sticking point. Uh, it is definitely going to be a challenge, but we are starting to be asked to do what processes need to change. And if you look at AT&T's Domain 2.0 document from November 2013, they actually identified a whole bunch of processes and how they would change. Whether they will change to the degree that they become like Google or Amazon. In fact, I would hope they wouldn't get quite <laughs> that uh, casual with their customers. But the reality is they're looking at moving to months to deploy rather than it's, now they're down to about a year to, for a new service deployment. If they can get down to two months or one month, they'll be very happy for a wholly new service. The interesting thing we see if you compare the mobile operator side of the same company to the fixed side is the mobile operators have learned to move a lot faster if only because the technology's moved a lot faster. And many of the mobile guys are now running the, the fixed or running the integrated operation. So we are starting to see some, some push from people who have moved faster. But you're right, they've still got a long way to go to move as fast as some of the internet guys. Now, another watchword of our days is openness. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot, huge, there, are, there are open projects on this, there are open initiatives, also, we won't name any names, but there are a lot of them out there. Okay, And this seems to have come from the fact that the carriers, the telcos, etc., for a long time felt pretty badly done to, despite the fact they were in cosy relationships with their switch providers or whatever they would have been and they routinely bought things because new ones came along etc whether they really needed one or not yep. that sort of thing now that has changed and they've come to the point for various reasons mostly to do with business rather than anything else where they're saying look we're not going to go down this locked in road any further we've had enough of it we have two technologies here in NFE and STN which allow us to change things completely we've got the whip hand now we want you to dance to our tune and we want to be open. We wanted to be able to take a module from here, from this vendor or supplier, manufacturer, another from here, and we want to knit them together ourselves and do it ourselves. So the industry says, of course, we'll have openness. Seems to me, though, having been here and having talked to people, one man's openness <laughs> is another man's <laughs> closeness. What do you make of that? Well, let me back up to your premise, which one of the in I totally agree with. And, and there's apparently some yet where the history is yet to be written of how the 13 operators got together to form the Etsy NFE. But what is really unusual about this is this was an operator-led push. Indeed. And it was the operators, as you correctly say, wanting to take back some control over the destiny of their future architecture. Um, I think they realized they were buying the same product in different forms over and over again, and, and a lot of them weren't working that well, or they had stranded uh, assets that were underutilized and buying too much without where they wanted to have more flexibility. So the premise I would totally agree with. Openness I, is actually one of the areas where I think this conference has made the hype worse, not better. Because open flow as a mechanism for interworking and providing the control mechanisms and messaging to, to manage the network, as well as open stack as a standardized set of software, uh, at least some versions of it, although there are multiple versions. Um, and, but we will see standardization around those too. What really bothered me is openness seems to have almost become uh, too much of a watchword. And we had a whole confusing discussion that everything had to be open source. Now, clearly, you want some elements to be open source if they're used by everyone. But I like to point out that although Linux is great today, having lived through the history of Unix, it took 30 years for us to know what to standardize to the point where it could be open source. And people are talking about making some of the network functional elements be open source. And I believe very strongly, if we do that, we will get no innovation. You cannot standardize before you actually create and innovate. 
So we actually want the diversity in this innovative phase. We want to move from these monolithic platforms to ones that are structured around the architecture with the virtual network functions, with the service orchestration. That's a huge task in itself. And then manage the interoperability of those through the standardized open interfaces. But that's key, and I'm somewhat horrified that people have leapt off the cliff into making everything one product. We will see multiple service orchestrators, multiple SDN controllers. There's not going to be one monolithic product. And if you try to do that, you will actually stop the innovation dead in its tracks. So I think openness has gone a little too far and is going to come back. And I'm hearing that the operators in these proof of concept trials have learned that in fact they didn't want to take on the systems integration role that you just described. They found out how much they wanted to have <laughs> pre-integrated <laughs> combinations. And I think we will see domains around which different vendors on open platforms are integrated. Because the function interoperability is actually not trivial and testing the interoperable capabilities and making sure things work together uh, is, is actually going to be one of the much tougher problems. It's getting very little discussion. Moving across different hardware platforms, that I think will truly be, uh, eventually be open once we've got the platforms defined. Okay. <coughs> we've got an awful lot to discuss. We haven't got the time to discuss it all, but I'm going to try and cram in another, a couple before we finish. We've heard a lot in general terms about the agility afforded by SDN and NFV and its potential to allow telcos to to compete properly with the OTT players. What do you think, if they're going to do that, what do you think will be the key services or applications that telcos will be enabled to launch by NFV and SDN? Well, you happen to hit one of my favorite topics and I think next year we'll be talking all about the service enablement. And this is not about services per se directly from SDN, mm. it's a service enabler. Mm. And we are actually in the middle of uh, doing a project for the Open Mobile Alliance, which if you know those guys, those are the guys that brought you the SMS and MMS and all those early uh, walled garden apps, as well as some of the newer apps. But they are now looking at how they can enable those services uh, with SDN. And things like an authenticated SMS delivery, or a guaranteed time to deliver a message, or even integrating a content delivery service with MMS. So services that t previously have been siloed in very narrow little vertical applications will suddenly be able to migrate in this world to both offer what I call the meta services that you know it was delivered, you know what quality it was delivered with, you know that the user received it. Um, all of those will be really great application enablers. And to come back to your over-the-top guys, I think some of the over-the-top guys will actually start to appreciate that. Some of the virtualization of content delivery with caching at the edge, even Netflix will appreciate that at <laughs> the same time that it saves bandwidth for the operators. Mm. So there will be, I think, some really good service enablement opportunities that actually bring some of the OTTs potentially back into the value chain through the telcos. Great answer, really. That's, and you could talk about that some more, couldn't you? But we've got to move I, on. I, this, is, <laughs> this is the emerging area. Yes, this is the next so. area. And we're obviously in the middle of writing a report on this topic. That's okay. <laughs> well, let's go, around, let's go around full circle back where we started. Three years ago, you know, Darmstadt, the beginning. Last year, Bad Homburg, the middle. This year, not the end. We're on the way to a destination, but the lifespan's been increased by another two years and so on. In the time you've been looking closely at this, um, how do you think the industry's expectations and perception of what NFV and SDN is, are, and what they can do have changed? Well, I, I think some of them have changed, and some of them may be getting more realistic. <laughs> the, the good news is the networks are really integrating IP into the heart of the network, has now happened over the last two years, both on the mobile and increasingly on the fixed side. And we're starting to see the control plane and the service plane be separated independent of the NFV SDN initiative. Mm. So I think it fits right in. I think, however, the gap between the IT mindset of the open net o ONF, the open network forum, and the telco world, and the, although ONF just reorganized to try and integrate the carriers more, but one of the comments made yesterday was by one of the OpenStack developers. He said, I still don't understand your acronyms that you're using. So I think we still have a long way to go to get the IT mindset and the telecoms networking software mindset to actually even be able to really talk to each other. 
And I'm not totally convinced. The Open Network Forum is definitely in favor of the IT guys. And we maybe need a, 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 not just an integration with telecoms. There may be some parallel efforts that are required to actually get the, the real networking stuff done. So uh, we'll see how that works out. But um, I'm not sure forcing the two together produces the best answer for either of them. But on the other hand, Sue, the operators are here. There are operators here, and there's a reason for that. And that must be a positive sign. But Linux and OpenStack are having a parallel meeting across the <laughs> river, right here in, Do they are. in Dusseldorf. They are. I didn't this know week, that till and, and I yeah. think they're speaking a different language. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's a long way. I've been in both the internet and the telecoms business, and they are different. They are maximizing different goals. The I, the the internet the the applications guys would love to have the network be just a giant bit pipe, and the telecoms guys want to offer value and service enhancement and be part of the value chain. And so there are some fundamental business conflicts here. And, yeah. and I think we will see a, a real value added version of SDN and NFV, where the telcos show how the network can add value to the OTT and the cloud. Real food for thought there. Sue Rudd, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, pleasure to talk to you.